Okay, so we're back in Helldivers 2 with a load of information for you guys. Some stuff you need to remember, some stuff that we need to talk about coming from the CEO of Arrowhead himself with regards to armor, which is a questionable hot take, but I want to know your guys' opinion all the same. That, and we've got a message from a really nice dude and a message from that level 50 guy. It's pretty good video today to be fair i'm quite happy with it if you haven't already smashed that beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe with post notifications turned on it'd be greatly appreciated on top of that check out our sponsor control freak the number one in controller gaming aiming that's right we made it rhyme and not only that but if you guys go down to the description right now click on the link and use code cloudplays at checkout you'll get yourself a cheeky discount it's just the way that it works hopefully you guys do enjoy and let's dive into it today. So starting off, a quick reminder for you guys is that the war bond is due to come in just a matter of days now. Over on the Twitter page, the Helldivers 2 post actually reminded us by putting the cutting edge on Thursday with everything that we're going to be receiving from it, including new primary weapons, utilities, player banners, capes, emotes, victory poses, and armor sets. Now, obviously, we've spoke about this quite a lot over the last couple of weeks, so I don't want to dive too much into that, but a Reddit post that got 7.3 thousand upvotes does agree, and I do solidly agree with this, stating it's sad to see people ask about the war bond. Look at what this S practices from other devs and AAA companies has done to us all. Having to ask, is this going to stay or does it replace the other war bond? Holy F, whoever came up with the idea to put things on timers and then take it away from people forever freaking FOMO. Cheers, Helldivers, for not doing that. All war bonds here to stay and that is obviously a full-blown fact for those of you guys who didn't know your war bonds are secured and you can unlock all of the stuff inside of them from here on out every time they obviously release a war bond it is going to be available for you guys for time that's just how this one works and i think that it's the best way to do it meaning that people don't have to race against the clock to complete everything so damn quickly knowing full well that their next war bond is going to eradicate the previous one so they may lose out on weapons hashtag fomo fear of missing out that's just how that one works and now that we've knocked that one out of the park we don't have to talk about that anymore but what we do have is a message from the ceo of arrowhead now somebody had actually posted on one of his tweets from the other day and they put would you consider armor set buffs slash perks to entice fellow hull divers to wear a complete armor set very good question a lot of games do do this they have those sort of added buffs if you wear all parts of the armor set you gain an additional perk which is really well and good but it just means that everybody's kind of running around in the same stuff especially if that perk is a little bit more of a bonus than others now the ceo of arrowhead responded with that saying not really it doesn't make that much sense why matching clothing or armor would do anything special than it well matching and he's got a solid point the concept is absolutely great but if he wants to add specific perks into certain armor sets i'm sure he'll just add them into individual pieces rather than having a set bonus i know it does work for a lot of games and i know that the overall for it would be pretty damn cool consensus being able to unlock another perk by just matching things together but I just like the way that they're so transparent with it. They're like, no, I don't like that. It just is absolutely great. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. Those of you guys who knew about the kicking issue over on Helldivers 2 will know full well that there is a problem with people being kicked before the game finishes based on what weapons you've got or if you're not getting enough kills or if they just don't like the color of your armor set because it's not black and yellow. Yep, that's a thing apparently. Well, somebody put this in here. Now, I have absolutely zero idea what any of this means, but if you guys are able to tell me in the comment section, that'd be absolutely great. But I am not a coder. But this guy, Mr. Lee, Construct underscore games is an unreal developer. A fair play to him. I just have no idea what this means. But he states, my suggestion would be to have something like this supplemented with a vote system bearing in mind if you have three player lobbies then votes would be weighed by that lobby which is probably why a lot of games go down the three player lobby route anyway the ceo actually responded with it's a pretty cool and simple way of analyzing it these styles of game development is my go-to explain the design by building it since it doesn't have to be scoped and planned for two weeks before being implemented and reviewed just do it and let's look at the results and that's what i love about this development team the most is that they just kind of run with it and if it works it works if it doesn't we hold our hands up and we'll go back to what we need to but this is why we've done what we've done and this is how it's going to work going forward 
With that being said, though, there was a Reddit post with 2.2 thousand upvotes that I feel like it should have got a lot more, which kind of goes along the exact thing that I've just been saying. Right here, controversial opinion? Maybe, maybe not. I'd like to hope not, but he states, I think the devs are doing a solid job so far. Things aren't perfect, but I'm still having a lot of fun, even on higher difficulties. Arrowhead had to deal with a launch that exceeded everyone's expectations and spend the first couple of weeks in crisis mode and still managed to release some new content and patch some significant bugs along the way. Yes, a lot of things still need balanced tweaks, but compare this to Kill the Justice League, a live service game from a much larger studio released around the same time that still has game breaking bugs, let alone new content or balancing. Really, my only requests currently are that the transparency is increased. I don't think stealth nerfs slash buffs help anyone. I'd simply like to know the change and the reason behind it, which allows for informed feedback from the players instead of an inaccurate guesswork. Example, we increased the spawn rate of the enemy patrols by 20% on high difficulties because we believe the completion percentage of those missions should be around 75% and we are seeing them at closer to 90%. As for the rest of the balance issues, I urge everyone to have just a little patience. Even if a change is bad, it takes time to gather data on how it's affected the flow of the game and confirm a revert is necessary. Remember that playing on higher difficulties is supposed to be hard. I agree that right now strategies are limited and often feel cheesy, but making improvements without completely destroying game balancing takes time as well. If things still feel completely imbalanced weeks, months down the line, I will happily to pick up my pitchfork again. Massive, massive, yes, 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 yes. This should have tens of thousands of upvotes on it. And this link is down in the description. Make sure you go ahead and give it an upvote because this has nailed it down to the ground. This development team was a small development team, a lot smaller than Suicide Squad. And geez, man, that game was an absolute tanking point. I covered that game for a little while before we went into Helldivers and it was atrocious it was a really really good game as an overall but it just never got any better and the end game for it was pretty flat out ridiculous just a rinse and repeat of the same thing but the game itself was good fun as an overall it just needed a rework on everything else that's where hell divers got it right the whole game is end game that's what you guys need to understand. The way that this rinse and repeats is almost like sort of like the extraction shooter styled play and it's just enjoyable from beginning to end. No matter what level you're on, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're unlocking, the game is enjoyable just to play it on its own. That's what I'm getting at. I want to know if you guys are agreeing or not via the comment section below. Let me know your opinion. Now, before we get into the final topic from the level 50 guy, we are going to be giving away a copy of Helldivers 2, or if you've already got the game, the money equivalent in super credits. If you guys want to get hold of that, then you have to do this very, very tricky thing for me. Get down to the comment section and stick a blue and a green heart at the exact same time in the comment section. It would be greatly appreciated and it will enter you in and we'll give it away in just a couple of days. We've already given one away so far and we're going to be doing a load more between here and the Discord, which you'll find the link in the description. That being said, let's dive on in to what has to be said by that level 50 guy. With 3.3 thousand upvotes on this Reddit post, it states right here, and I really, really like this post. I am that level 50 guy. I like answering just stress calls. After more than 200 hours playing, the only thing I collect from missions are super creds and democratic liberty, of course. If you place an SOS beacon, that means that you are asking for help with completing a main OBJ. Thus, I will try to save you from the emergent danger and lead you towards victory. If I see three dudes consistently dying into a useless bug hole, I will head to the OBJ, cleaning all places of interest I come across and save the samples I see. After, I will head to the extraction zone and call Pelican 1, and I will tell you, don't worry, Shuttle can wait till the end of the game. You can finish everything that you want, don't worry, and that's true. Shuttle will wait after landing. But being kicked right after joining is quite discouraging and harmful experience. You ask for help, I try to do so. Anyway, I hope everything will be fine one day. SES Song of Redemption, Skull Admiral. This is hilarious. Absolutely hilarious, but he's nailed it on the head. And I think that that's something that you guys need to remember. By putting the SOS beacon down, you open up the game for people to join and help you. If you don't want the help, 
don't put the bloody beacon down. It's really that simple. You don't get to pick and choose who it is that's helping you, and you don't know the person on the other side. So make sure that you be kind to your fellow hell divers. This is bloody important, and we really, really are a big advocate for it. We want to be a community which is endearing towards each other and helps each other and genuinely gets along really well. And for the most part, you guys are absolutely levering it. So a massive round of applause from me to you, just for being who you are. Keep going out there, guys, and keep fighting for democracy. Thank you so much again for watching, guys. That is all we've got time for today. Remember to like, subscribe, appreciate your faces, and I'll see you in the clouds.